Hey, hey everybody, Jason here, and I'm back with another quick video for you guys today. Today, we're gonna do a review on my Haas Super Mini Mill 2. Let's get going. I decided to shoot this review specifically because there are a lot of guys that are graduating from hobby style mills. Converted Grizzlies, Tormox, other homebrew machines, and there are a lot of people that are starting to consider buying industrial quality machines like Haas machines, and so I thought this would be a good opportunity to kind of share my personal experience and help you avoid some of the mistakes that I've made. If you're a seasoned veteran or you work in a high-level industrial machine shop, this probably isn't the video for you. I ended up purchasing the Super Mini Mill 2, which is pretty much king of the Mini Mill series. There are a variety of different sizes of machines that you can get, different levels of horsepower for the spindle, different length and travels. My specific machine has a 15 horsepower, 10,000 RPM spindle, and when it comes to the travels, it's 20 inches on the X, 16 inches on the Y, and 14 inches on the Z. The table itself is 40 inches by 14 inches, and this machine will actually cut at 833 inches a minute, and it actually rapids at 1,200 inches a minute. The base price on the Super Mini Mill 2 is $45,995, and that's getting up there. You definitely can start considering a Haas VF1 or a VF2 when you get into those types of prices. That's the base price, and there are a tremendous number of options that are available on these machines. I was pretty conservative. I only added two options. I added the, the Auto Air Gun and the MQL, which is minimum quantity lubrication. That's because I didn't intend to use flood coolant. And I'm not sure how exactly how I feel about the investment on that. It was almost $3,000 for that setup. The second option that I added that I'm absolutely ecstatic about is the Renishaw probing system, and I literally don't think I could live without it now that I've had it. It's so valuable, not just for setting up work offsets, but for all types of other things. Integration with macros, in-process gauging, and it, it's just capable of so much. So if you're interested in getting yourself any of the Haas generations of mills, I would seriously consider looking into the Renishaw probing system. Everybody's needs are different, so let me share exactly why I made the decision to buy the Haas Super Mini Mill 2 and how I kind of arrived at that decision. Basically, I have a small business. We were manufacturing products and tooling in Asia. We had some problems with those vendors, and we decided to move everything to America, and we wanted to do it as cost-effectively as we could. We just, you know, we're not loaded with cash or anything like that. So we started looking at different options. We tried another option that didn't work out for us, so we decided to try out the Haas Mill. And really, there were a couple of, the, I would say there were two motives motivating factors more than anything that influenced my decision to buy the Haas. Let me, let me do this, let me call it three decisions. It was this, it was number one, the support system. Watching all the YouTube videos and all the educational content that they had available, that was a huge influencer for me. The second thing was that we wanted a machine that had large enough travels to be able to accomplish exactly what we wanted and then some. And last, and last but not least, and this might be the most important one, we only had a 40 amp breaker for our 208 three-phase building available. So we knew that we really couldn't go over that. Lo and behold, I found out some more information later on that we'll talk about here in the review, but those were the three primary deciding factors on how we decided. Overall, I'm really happy with the performance of my Super Mini Mill 2. I bought it specifically to cut discs that are about seven inches round and do some circular interpolation. And obviously, you'd rather have a lathe to cut something like this, but I will tell you right now, on a very consistent basis, we're able to do a circular interpolation on an OD in tool steel, less than a thousand. So, I mean, it's I'm super happy with the performance. It runs well, it's accurate, it's consistent. I really like the Haas Next Generation control. I love the fact that you can integrate media files into the controller. I honestly felt like learning the control itself was very, very straightforward. Not only that, but Haas has a tremendous amount of resources online showing you how to use the machine. And there are other YouTubers out there like the Clark Magnet School of Engineering, and they take you through the Haas control. So all in all, the performance of the machine, I'm very happy with. Now, keep in mind, I don't have a tremendous amount of experience with super high-end, you know, you know, boxed way, 50 taper machines and all this type of stuff. And I do understand that the Super Mini Mill, its casting doesn't sit on the floor, its casting sits on, on the stand. So I'm sure that it's probably not as rigid as something like a VF2. But up to this point, for a guy that's graduated from these hobby-based mills, I am very, very impressed with the performance of the machine. Okay, we're getting towards the end of this review. We'll get to the conclusion here in just a few minutes, but I've got a few complaints that I wanna to talk to you guys about. And these complaints more are probably a mismanagement of my own expectations, so just take this with a grain of salt. But these things are called mini mills. I would have thought that they'd be a little bit smaller. The table height on the Super Mini Mill 2 is substantially higher than it is on like a Haas VF1. So 
I'm not quite 5'8", so I wasn't super pumped about that. And it was something that really surprised me when the machine arrived. The tool change is another issue. As I was looking through the options, I didn't see another option to option the machine out with another tool changer. And so the only experience I had in actually researching these Haas Super Mini Mills was from a YouTube channel. My buddy DCT Teacher, that's Aaron Powder down in Australia, has a Haas Super Mini Mill 2 at one of the educational institutions, and that machine has a side mount tool changer. Once the G54 code offset has been set, we can put the probing tool away, come over to your machine, look for an empty pocket, uh, the Haas software will automatically record which pocket it goes into to call it up. These pocket numbers have absolutely no reference to tooling numbers. I just assumed that I'd be getting a side mount tool changer. Of course, I was uninformed and uneducated and it's all my fault, but it was pretty disappointing to find out that they didn't even offer that as an option anymore. One of the things that really impressed me before I bought my Haas mini mill was the fact that Haas had this DIY website. It's basically DIY.haascnc.com. And it's this huge repository of information where you can go input your serial number and you can find replacement parts very easily for your machine, or you can see what upgrades are available. They even had like a little archive section where you could go and you could find the service manuals for your machine. There's basically two flavors, electrical and mechanical. But one of the things that kind of stumped me, and I didn't really realize this until after I had already received my machine, is that the newest manual I could find for any of the mini mills was 2011. And here I'm buying a machine in 2018. So originally I had thought, man, Haas really wants us to be able to service our own machines after warranty. Now I'm really not so sure. Ironically, right after I was kind of browsing the site a couple days later, I ended up powering up my machine, you know, flip off the e-stop, hit the power up. And when the machine referenced home, I got an error code 165, which is like X axis limit error or something like that. And come to find out, as I called my HFO, which has been super helpful, they said, hey, look, you're gonna have to just take the air gun and kind of spray some air underneath the table, and hopefully it's just a limb, just a chip stuck on the limit switch. That seems to be what it was, because I haven't had a problem since, but I was like, well, where do I aim the air gun? They're like, well, just under the table on the left side. I'm like, well, can you tell me where the limit switch is? They're like, we don't really know. And so that, that brings me, like, that brings this conversation full circle, like, why can't Haas just provide us with the basics? We're not asking for tradecraft here, but we're just asking for the very bare minimum of information so that we know which panels we need to remove to get at these types of sensors. But obviously Haas doesn't want to provide that. It does seem that they've put up this new site here in the last few weeks or last month or so, but even now, I went today and I actually searched error code 165, and it tells you that there's some type of a limit switch error, but it doesn't tell you it doesn't even give you the link to find out where that limit switch is located on your machine. So it's just The lighting in the machine is, is one other issue. You'll watch some of the Haas videos and they'll tell you, oh man, the lighting's really good. And if you're gonna fully enclose it, now you need light. You don't have the light from your shop anymore. Right, so we added the brightest LED we could find and it actually, I think, lights it up better than uh, with the roof open. It does. You got a lot of light on your table and your workpiece. Well, I can tell you that the lighting is decent at the very best. It casts some pretty aggressive shadows and the LED actually comes off from the right side. So if you actually reach your head in there to say jog the probe into a very specific location, you're probably not gonna poke your head in there underneath the umbrella tool changer with all kinds of sharp tools poking out. You're gonna put your head in there over in front of the light, which then blocks your ability to see what you're doing. So the lighting isn't the best. And the last thing that I guess would be my complaint, it's that I didn't really realize this, but after talking to several technicians in the industry, the costs for maintenance and servicing the Mini Mill series can be substantially more expensive than they are on like a VF1 or a VF2 because there's so much less access. Because there are no windows on the sides of the machine or no access panels on the sides of the machine, everything has to be done. You just kind of have to worm your way through that front door. So those are my primary complaints. Okay, let's get down to the bottom line. What's the conclusion on this? Well, as far as I can tell you, it's like this. I'm super happy with my Haas Factory Outlet machining time savers down there in Anaheim. They've been super helpful. On more than one occasion, they've actually reached out to me proactively after seeing posts on social media, asking if they can be of assistance or help out. They've sent me like uh, example macro files. I mean, just Bob, James, Greg, I can't say thanks enough to you guys. I appreciate it a ton. But the bottom line is this, would I buy this machine again today knowing if I knew then what I know now? Nope, I would not buy this machine again. This ultimately ended up being the wrong machine for me. 
I feel like I, I feel like there was kind of a combination of my salesman being a little bit newer and inexperienced, maybe a little bit unknowledgeable about certain things, and my inability or my lack of experience and not really knowing exactly which questions to ask. And so it's kind of like the perfect storm. The machine itself is awesome. It's just not the machine I would buy again if I had to do it over again today. If I did have to do it over again today and I were gonna buy a Haas, which I probably would because I think that they make a good piece of equipment, it would probably be a VF2. And the reason it would be a VF2 as opposed to say like a VF1 is real simple. A VF1 and a VF2 use the exact same sheet metal enclosure, but the VF2 has larger travels. Both of these machines have castings that actually sit on the floor. They don't actually have the column and the casting that sit on a stand, so they're a little bit heavier, a little bit more rigid. And a VF2, the base VF2 is only $5,000 more than the base of my Super Mini Mill 2. So, hope you guys enjoyed watching this video just as much as I enjoyed making it, and we will see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.